So right now, we're gonna look at applying the rules that we learned in the previous tutorial. So in other words, deducing oxidation states of elements within compounds or maybe just elements or ions or whatever, we're looking at applying those rules because you need to be able to find the oxidation states of individual elements before we start looking at whole equations and looking at changes in oxidation states. So if you wanna print this off, the PDF's below, but if not, you can just do this on a piece of paper. If you're pretty confident with this, maybe have a go at them first and then check your answers at the end. But if you're not sure, I'm gonna talk you through each of these as quickly and as efficiently as I can. So firstly, we've got chlorine. Chlorine is the underlined one. This is the oxidation state I'm looking to find. First thing I would always do is decide on the overall oxidation state. Well, the overall oxidation state in this is no charge in it. So the overall oxidation state here is zero. Now, of course, chlorine, Cl2, is just an element. Now, the rule is that if it's just an element, then the oxidation state of that element equals zero. So zero, I'm gonna do my final answer in red here. Okay, that is the oxidation state of chlorine there. Why? Because it's just an element. Next up, we've got ammonia. Again, the overall oxidation state here is zero because there's no charge. Now, what do we know? Well, we need to find the oxidation state of nitrogen. What do we know about hydrogen? Well, hydrogen in any compound has a plus one oxidation state. It's not with a metal, okay? It's with nitrogen. So we know it's got a plus one oxidation state. And we've got three of those, okay? So we've got three plus one oxidation states. So nitrogen must obviously counteract those three to take the overall back up to zero. So of course, nitrogen therefore must be minus three because the minus three cancels out the three plus ones we've got, and that is our oxidation state of nitrogen. Onto MnO2. Now again, overall oxidation state of zero. We're looking to find Mn there, but we know oxygen most of the time has got a minus two oxidation state. So we've got two lots of minus two there. Now to counteract those, the manganese must be plus Four. Okay, so that's our oxidation state of the manganese in this, okay, to counteract the oxygen there. Fe2O3, overall oxidation state is zero, no charge. Again, it's the oxygen that we know. We've actually got three of them this time, so three lots of minus two. So the iron must be plus six, right? Because minus six plus six, but hang on we've got a cheeky two there. We've actually got two iron atoms in this formula. So plus six, the iron accounts for plus six, but there's two of them. So each iron must be plus three. This is actually iron three oxide. All right, so that's plus three for iron there. HClO, overall oxidation state of zero. This is another weird example where we're trying to find the chlorine. Chlorine's usually minus one, right? Well, actually, not unless it's bonded to a more electronegative element, in this case, oxygen. So oxygen is minus two. Hydrogen, we know to be plus one. So the minus two takes us down to minus two, plus one, and that takes us to minus one. And of course, the difference here between minus one and zero, the chlorine must be accounting for plus one. Okay, so that's a weird one there, because usually we'd expect that to be minus one, but don't forget what I said in the rules in the previous tutorial. Now the dichromate ion, this is what you're gonna come across again. The overall oxidation state here is minus two. Why? Because it's got a two minus charge. So this is the overall oxidation state we're aiming for here, not zero. So we're trying to find the chromium. Now each oxygen we know is minus two. Okay, and now we've got seven of them here. So I'm just gonna assume that we're gonna times that by seven. So seven times minus two is minus 14. What's that in Roman numerals? All right, there we go. Yeah, minus 14. Now we gotta get from minus 14 up to minus two. That's our aim here. So the difference here is actually plus 12. Okay, so the chromium is accounting for plus 12. Just like our example up here, there are two of them. So each chromium must be accounting for plus 
six. Okay, so that is our oxidation state of chromium in our dichromate ion. Onto sulfuric acid, we've got overall oxidation state of zero. We've got four lots of minus two. Okay, so minus two, minus two, minus two, minus two. And we've got a minus eight in total. We've got two lots of plus one for our hydrogen here. So minus eight plus two. So that gives us minus six overall. We've got to take that up to zero. So our sulfur must be plus six. Okay, and that is our oxidation state of sulfur in there. HPO3, two minus. Again, we've got an overall oxidation state of minus two. We've got three lots of oxygen, so minus two, minus two, minus two. And we've got a plus one for hydrogen. So minus six plus one is minus, minus five. We've got to get from minus five to minus two. So the difference there is the phosphorus and that is plus three. Vanadium, overall oxidation state of plus three because it's an ion, it's got three plus. And you know what? It's an element. So of course the oxidation state of this must be the same as that of its ion, which is plus three. So that's vanadium there. Sulfur, overall oxidation state of zero. There might be a molecule here, S8, but it's still just an element. So you know what? The oxidation state of sulfur is zero. Now this one's interesting. You're going to see these, okay? So these are the kind of more tricky ones. So you've got Ca, VO3, brackets two. We're trying to find the vanadium. So the overall oxidation state here is zero, but that doesn't really help, okay? What I would do actually is get rid of this calcium. Now we know calcium in any compound will be plus two oxidation state because it's a group two element. So if this calcium has like a two plus charge to think about it in ions for a second, each of these VO3s must be one minus, okay? So that's the overall oxidation state there is minus one for a VO3 minus. Now this is easier to deal with once we've got rid of all the other stuff. So in terms of VO3 minus, we've got three lots of minus two, which gives us minus six, but we've got to get from minus six to plus one. And of course that means the vanadium must be plus five. So with these, I would basically expand out the brackets, get rid of the calcium, find out what the overall charge is of whatever's in the brackets, and then do it from there. And that makes life a lot easier. BO3 minus, well actually our overall oxidation state is minus one. We've got three lots of oxygen. So that's three lots of minus two. So that's minus six, difference between minus six and minus one is plus five for our boron. Now H2O2, overall oxidation state here is zero. Now, an exception to the rule is when oxygen is in a peroxide molecule, and this is a peroxide molecule, um, then it hasn't got an oxidation state of minus two. It's actually got an oxidation state of minus one. Okay, so the reason is, okay, if you try to do two lots of minus two and then two lots of plus one here, something's got to give. Hydrogen can't be plus one and oxygen minus two. It doesn't work out. They don't balance. So it's the oxygen that gives in here, okay, and actually gives us a minus one oxidation state. A manganate ion, so MnO4 minus, of course, a minus one oxidation state in total. We've got four lots of minus two for oxygen, so that takes us down to minus eight oxidation state. The difference between minus eight and minus one is actually plus seven. Okay, so manganese has got a plus seven oxidation state there. And this is another one like dichromate that you'll come across again, because it's really, really common. It's actually called potassium manganate seven. Manganate seven, because that's the oxidation state of the manganese. So once in the penultimate one, we've got magnesium nitride. Again, overall oxidation state is zero. We're trying to find nitrogen here because that can have a variable oxidation state. So we've got three lots of magnesium group two. So all of these are plus two. So three lots 
of plus two, that gives us plus six in total. We're trying to get from plus six to zero. That's of course minus six, but we do have two nitrogens. So each of those must be minus three in terms of oxidation state. Now this last one here looks massive, looks really complex, but you know what? Let me show you how to break it down. The overall oxidation state here is plus two. I'm gonna put that outside the box there. The first thing I'm gonna do is PTH2O5OH2+. Now, you know what? I'm gonna eliminate the water completely. Why? Because the water overall has an oxidation state of zero. There's no point working these out because all these hydrogens and oxygens in here cancel each other out. So what we're left over with is actually PT brackets OH two plus. So this is a lot easier to work out. Now what I do know is an OH minus ion has an overall oxidation state of minus one. So we've got to get from minus one to plus two. So what does that mean for our platinum here? Well our platinum must be plus three. So if you do get these compounds where they have these, what they call water of crystallization, you've got H2O5 here as a ligand, then you know what? You can just eliminate them and focus on the things that have charges and that redox actually applies to. So I've whistled through these, okay? But hopefully, you know, these are all different examples of things you may come across. And I've shown you my method in how I work out these oxidation states, but it does take practice, okay? So make sure, you know, you're not gonna know every single one, you have to work them out. But I've shown you now with different examples, with brackets and with H2Os and with charges and stuff, then you should, using these 16 examples we've got here, then be able to figure out what oxidation states are of unknown elements in compounds and in ions. And that's what we're going to be using over the next few tutorials.